Hello and welcome to this guide on how to land on the moon in Kerbal Space Program 2. So for this video we're going to be using the lander section of this configuration. Um, this is based on the, well this is from the how to build a Saturn V guide that I made. Uh, if you'd like to see how to build this please feel free to go and have a look at that. But um, let's get straight into the tutorial. Um, Actually, before we do get into the tutorial, I'll just provide a quick disclaimer that this is by no means the only way to get down to the surface. It's also not necessarily the most accurate way to get down. Uh, in other words, if you're trying to build a base in a specific location or you're trying to get to somewhere like the Moon Arch, then this might not be the best way to get down there. Um, you may be able to use this technique to get down there if, with a bit of practice. However, this is literally just the easiest way I've found to get onto the surface, nice and simple, um, with uh, using as little fuel as uh, possible. Anyway, the first thing we want to do is we want to move the crew from the command module into the lander. Obviously, if you're using a single piece lander and return um, module, then this it won't necessarily be relevant however to move crew from one part to another you want to go to the app bar you want to click on this little icon here on the far right and then you will find the resource manager action group manager and Kerbal manager and it's the Kerbal manager that we need for this so if we click on that we can see the three crew in the mark 1.3 gumball and we want to move two of them two of them into the tuna can so I'm just going to move Edwin and Bill into there and now that means that we, if we zoom into the command module, we can see that we only have one Kerbal inside the command module, which means the other two are in the lander. So the next thing we want to do is if we right click on the lander can, we can then control, well, we can hit the control from here button. And if you keep an eye on the nav ball, you will see that the nav ball has now changed to the blue section instead of the brown section, which means that we're now controlling from there. Now the next bit uh, we're going to do is we're going to hit M on our keyboard to get to the map and we're going to focus on the moon by right clicking on it and hitting the focus button and we need to choose where we're going to land. So as a rule of thumb the grey areas are generally a lot smoother and a lot flatter than the light areas and that just uh, basically means it's much easier to land on the grey areas because we're not going to end up landing on the side of a really steep hill or on the edge of a crater or something along those lines. So because our orbit runs across this grey area here, we're going to try and land there. So firstly, I am going to temporarily place a node there. We're not actually going to create anything. Then we're going to zoom out and we are going to place the actual manoeuvre on the opposite side of the planet or the moon from where we are wanting to land. And we're going to place a manoeuvre node. The next thing is if you click near the maneuver node, uh, we can bring up these arrows, um, we want to pull, well we can pull outwards on the retrograde arrow, but it's easier to pull inwards on the prograde arrow because that just gives you a little bit more fine control. And we're going to try and get our periapsis down to roughly 10,000 metres. So we're at 11,000, move this down to 10,000. 9,200 should do the trick and as you can see our orbit is roughly around 75,000 meters in um, height uh, the reason I've placed the configuration into that orbit is it's not too far away from the surface and it just means that we'll use less fuel to get down to the surface so now we're there uh, the main reason we wanted to create that maneuver node is to get this timer up because we are going to warp forwards until we get to T minus 10 minutes and this is just something I like to do just to make sure that I've got plenty of time to make sure that uh, we've got everything in order and um, if anything goes wrong or we realise we haven't done something then we need to, you know, we've got plenty of time to fix any issues. So now we're there, we're going to come back out onto the flight view and we are going to decouple the lander from the command module. So to decouple the lander you just right click on either of the docking ports and you hit the undock button and then just to make sure that we don't lose control and start spinning like mad we're going to hit the SES control button just to make sure that um, it stays nice and stable and something else I personally like to do it depends on the um, command module that you're using but personally I like to just use the square bracket key either one will do the trick just to tab back to the command module and then turn off the RCS and the SES just to make sure that we're not wasting any uh, electricity while we are um, doing the landing and this is just sitting up in orbit. 
So now we'll go back to the command, uh, the lander. We're going to deploy the landing legs because it's always best to have these deployed straight away, um, just so that you don't end up forgetting. And as you can see, um, this seems to happen quite a lot, even though we changed from the command module to the lander, the maneuver is actually still locked to the command module. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to go back to the map. And once again, this is why it's a good idea to give yourself plenty of time before the actual maneuver starts in order to make sure that we have time to recreate any maneuvers or change anything. So I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to place the actual maneuver. Apologies, it's a bit awkward when you get to the top like that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to place the actual maneuver on the opposite side of the planet. And then we're just going to do exactly what we did before and pull this down to around about 10,000 meters from the surface. So 9,000 should do the trick. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the level indicator, which is the white um, marker on the nav ball, is pointed directly at the maneuver node. Uh, it was pretty close, but this way it'll just remain locked. And that way, when we uh, warp to the maneuver, we won't then have to panic and try and get the uh, lander in position. So I think now we're all ready. We can hit the warp to maneuver button. And as usual, once we get to 30 seconds on the timer, it will the, the warp will stop. And then I'm just going to warp forward by a couple more notches until we get to about 10 seconds. And now we're here, we're going to press Z on our keyboard to put the throttles full. And when the timer reaches zero, we will start our initial burn. Then once the uh, timer has hit zero again, we're going to press X on our keyboard to cut the throttle. And we can see that our periapsis is now at 7,000 meters, which isn't too bad. Uh, like I say, as long as it's not too close to the surface, then this technique should work quite well because the next thing we're going to do is we are going to change the altimeter so instead of it saying C it will say ground and if you make a note it says 76,000 meters at the moment whereas if you click on ground it says 73 and a half so that basically we need to make sure it is on ground because if we keep it on C then we'll end up thinking that we are nearly well we've still got two and a half thousand meters left to go when we're actually about to hit the surface so if we make sure that's on ground, we can now warp forwards. I'm going to warp forwards until the altimeter reaches in the region of 10,000. I overdid it ever so slightly, but that shouldn't be a problem. Um, because, as I say, we had it set so that we're nice and far above the surface. We're not going to hit any uh, mountains or anything. Uh, the next thing we need to do is make sure that the LEM is pointed retrograde. Which means that the engine will be pointed in the direction that we are flying. I'm also going to orientate the LEM just so that the uh, blue section of the nav ball is at the top. And it just makes it a little bit easier to manage what we are doing. And if you note on the orbital info, our um, periapsis has now dropped, and that will keep steadily dropping uh, the closer we get to the surface. Um, but once the altimeter reaches 5,000 meters, that is when we want to start our final landing burn. And this will depend on the thrust to weight ratio of the um, lander you're using. The thrust to weight ratio of this is actually 0.333. Uh, so I'm going to go full throttle, whereas if you have a really high um, thrust to weight ratio, you might actually want to only use like partial throttle. Because we don't want to reduce our speed too quickly, because then we'll end up basically wasting fuel. And like I said, this is an attempt to be as efficient as we can get. So now we are reaching 5,000. I'm going to place it on full throttle. And the next thing we'll do is we'll keep an eye on our velocity. Uh, it's always a good idea to make sure it's set to surface. The orbital velocity and surface velocity aren't hugely different. There's only about 10 meters per second. But if we make sure we're on surface, then that'll give us the uh, best idea of how we are doing with regards to our speed. So we're going to keep an eye 
on the velocity and once it reaches somewhere in the region of 150 to 100 meters per second we're going to reduce the throttle to somewhere maybe around between half and a quarter throttle obviously as i said before if you're using a high um, thrust to weight ratio rocket then yeah you'll just basically reduce the throttle so we're not overdoing it because if we overdo the throttle then we might end up burning in the other direction and we'll just waste fuel and uh, we might end up running out before we actually get close enough to the ground so as I say we're reaching 150 so I'm just going to start steadily reducing the throttle and we're going to try and keep it somewhere in the region of 100 meters per second until we get to about 2500 meters from the ground So you'll also note that as we slow down, the LEM is now actually starting to pitch upwards. So the level indicator is now moving towards the top of the nav ball. I've overdone the throttle ever slightly, but as long as we don't go too slow, then uh, or too yeah, we don't burn, burn, we don't burn too much, then we shouldn't it shouldn't have much of a problem. The next thing we want to do is, I'm just going to quickly pause it, just so that we don't go too far, is we want to have a look around and find out where the sun is coming from. So we can see that the sun's coming from over there. So if we look behind us, we're now going to keep an eye on the ground and look for our own shadow. One way I find easier to do that is if you use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can actually detach the camera from the anchor point and look around manually. So I'm going to restart the game and wait until our shadow appears and the reason why you do that is you want to make sure um, well the shadow is the best indicator as to how you are doing with regards to your descent rate and height from the ground so can we see it yet so while I'm doing this I'm also keeping a close eye on my altitude and my descent rate and there's the shadow there so as you can see, that will give you a good idea of how you are doing with regards to where you are in relation to the surface. We are coming down to around 5,000 or 500 meters. So I'm going to increase the throttle slightly and reduce our re descent rate to somewhere in the region of 10 meters per second. We just need to keep finessing the throttle to make sure that we don't overdo it and we don't also descend too quickly. So we're doing fine for fuel at the moment. Our descent rate is very slowly reducing. Very nice steady 2.6, 2.7. As you can see the shadow is getting closer. I'm going to press home on the keyboard to relock the camera to the lander. And I'm also going to reduce the throttle even more because the longer we spend uh, floating above the surface, the more fuel we will use. But because the throttle is so low, we're not going to be using the uh, fuel that quickly. And generally, as long as you are below 5 meters per second, you shouldn't hit the ground too far, too hard. I like to try and keep the uh, descent rate somewhere in the region of one meter per second. As you can see we're kicking up some dust. And once the landing legs touch down, oh, uh, we did it ever so slightly, but we didn't go too far. Anyway, once the landing legs have touched down, we are going to cut the throttle. And touch down. So there we have it, that was a very smooth landing. Uh, it's ever so slightly uneven where we are at the moment. Um, so this is where we do what's called a stay no stay um, check, which basically means, is it tipping over? Um, will we be able to take off? Um, and if it looks like we are going to fall over, then we want to either take off again. If we've got enough fuel, we can try and find somewhere uh, a little easier or a little smoother to um, land. But this looks fairly stable to me. We're not too far off of the top of the nav ball, and even though we're on the edge of this little crater here, the landing legs seem to be holding out quite nicely. So, yeah, that is how to land on the surface of the moon. Um, the next thing I would normally do is I would right-click on the landing leg and just 
strengthen up the landing legs. Um, you might want to do this before, however, personally I do it afterwards because um, we want a little bit of flex in the legs just to make sure that we don't end up bouncing. Because if you hit the ground too hard and the landing legs are maxed out, then you'll end up bouncing and it could go all over the place. But this way, when you EVA your um, astronauts or your kerbinauts, then the lander won't end up falling over. But um, yeah, that is how to land on the surface of the moon. Uh, that's the easiest way I personally have found it. It always seems to work for me, providing you don't overdo the throttle and misjudge your uh, descent rate. Um, but yeah, I hope that was a helpful tutorial. If you uh, enjoyed this tutorial, please feel free to like and subscribe. And next I will do a tutorial on, on how to launch from the surface of the moon. As you can see, this is a two-stage lander. So we'll be, we will be decoupling the top of this lander from the bottom and leaving the bottom on the surface. And then uh, during that tutorial, I'll also rendezvous and dock with the command module in orbit. And I will also... Um, probably go back and show you how to get back to Kerbin as well. I'll do all that in one video. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, as I say, please feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully I will see you in the next one.